Indiana with a big win right here in Dayton. Now they move on to the Sweet 16 to face Syracuse. I'm Tom Vandervoort alongside college basketball writer Mike DeCourcy as we break down each and every game of this year's NCAA tournament. Thanks to UPS and the UPS team performance index. Let's start with Indiana, Mike, because it looked for a while like Khalif Wyatt and Temple was going to take them down. But Oladipo, Cody Zeller, between the two of them, they had as many points as Wyatt, and they managed to escape. Well, what happened in the end was Oladipo made the, took over the big moment, was willing to do it, and both at the offensive end and defensive end. I didn't really quite ever understand why Indiana just didn't set Oladipo loose on Wyatt the entire time, have him face guard him, and just not let him into the game. I was a little surprised by that. Even in the second half, after it became obvious that he was going to take him out of the game, uh, there was an eight-minute period where Wyatt did not score after scoring the first basket of the second half because Oladipo wouldn't let him touch the ball. And then they switched the matchup again. So a little bit mysterious on that. I never really did quite understand why they went in that direction. Victor Oladipo is the most impactful perimeter defender in college basketball. He, he can break up a play. He can steal the basketball. He can block shots. He's been a little bit muted. Today it was mostly because the goal number one was don't let Wyatt touch the basketball. But we haven't seen the Oladipo blocks. We haven't seen the game breaking steals. Really in about the last four or five games he's been a little understated. But when the moment came with the opportunity for him to get the big jump shot and, and, and take that shot on, he did he made the shot, clinched the victory, and they're moving on to the Sweet 16. Absolutely, and I look down at my TPI numbers here. I Indiana's got a very good offensive number. When I watch them, they, they seem to have it sometimes, and then they seem to lose it. How does that play against that very formidable Syracuse zone? You know, it, it's kind of funny because if you're playing the zone right, then you have to move the basketball. And Indiana is not a elite offensive team. They have elite offensive players all the time. They right. always have five guys on the floor who can score, except maybe one ro one one short minor rotation here and there. Mm -hmm. They almost always have five scores on the floor. And sometimes that's a blessing because it makes you really hard to guard. Right. And sometimes it's a curse because everybody thinks they should shoot it. Right. And that's been Indiana's problem. They're always trapped in between those two realities. When they've won, they've moved the basketball. Will they move the basketball against the zone? Because you can come down if you want against a 2-3 zone and dribble it down and just shoot it because there's nobody there. Right. If that's the way you want to play, you can do that. And sometimes they do that, uh, yeah. but it's not, you're not going to win the game effective. like that. Right. You're not, you, you might make a couple. But in the that end, that might be a curse. That's true too. In the end, you're going to lose the game. If you move the basketball, if you get into the high post, they have a couple of options there. Mm -hmm. uh, Zeller, they can flash high. Even better, Christian Watford in that hole. Uh, Oladipo as well, because if he gets that ball at the top of the zone, he can not only shoot it from there, he can drive it too. So they have a lot of different ways they can attack it, but it's all new to them. I mean, it's not like they've never seen a 2 3 zone, right. but not a lot of it in the Big Ten. They don't play a lot of zone, and nobody plays a zone anywhere yep. like Syracuse. Uh, they have they have the long athletes. They have certain rules that they've developed over uh, Coach Beheim's 25 plus years of doing that. Yep. Uh, so it, it's different, and they're going to have to spend a lot of time this week preparing for that. And then if they're fortunate, th that's the fun part of the tournament. You spend all week trying to get ready for that, and then if you're fortunate and you get to play in the Elite Eight, you have to completely relearn something by the following uh, two days. Well, I guess it's good for them. They got a little bit of time to learn against that two-three zone. And finally, just tell me what you think about Syracuse and where their confidence is after losing in the Big East tournament losing a big lead and losing to Louisville and kind of getting run out of the gym in the second half there. Where do you think they are now? Because they look good this time. I'll be honest with you. I didn't think that that was a big deal, mm -hmm. Get, getting beaten that badly. I thought getting there was huge for Syracuse. Yeah. If they had lost to Pitt, and they came close, I mean, they had a big lead on Pitt and almost let, it, let that one get away. Uh, if they had lost that game, I think they would have come into this tournament broken, wounded, and really struggled. But I think getting to the championship game mm -hmm. rejuvenated them and getting the big lead on a great team like Louisville. They, they were able to walk away and say, hey, look, we just played three games in three days. Maybe we didn't have any gas left, right. but we're still good. We're, we're good again. Right. And they are. And, they, and honestly, they're the most talented four seed in this tournament. It's not even close. It's not close because honestly, they're one of the four or five most talented teams in the tournament anyway, regardless of seed. So it's not a great matchup for IU to get that as your four seed. I mean, look at some of the teams who are out there available to them. Kansas State, not in the tournament anymore. Yeah. Uh, so this is a great situation for Syracuse to be able to come in here and use their athleticism and use their offensive ability to make it a hard night for Indiana. Well, it's going to be fascinating. Again, great matchup in the Sweet 16. For Mike DeCourcy, I'm Tom Vandervoort. Thanks again to UPS, and we'll see you next time.